Jean Bradfield for the Manning Street Preachers. This is my very first interview in Romania at Music Channel. Hello, welcome to Romania. We are very excited to have you here in Flesh and Bones at Music Channel. This is our TV post. And uh, what can I say? We already had you. We had some of your clips in our rock chart show. So uh, we are declared fans. We like you very much. The first question would be, um, what do you know about the fans in Romania or our country in general, if you know anything about it? Um, well, I kind of, I know kind of like, you know, uh, quite a lot of like a, about Romanian football. Um, and I know quite a lot about the political background in Romania, but that's not something I, you know, for me to speak about, so to speak. Um, but this, to be honest, this is just exciting for us because it's our first time here. So it's, it's hard for me to talk about any expectations or, or, you know, or, or, you know, what we might find about the country because this, this is our first time. So it's just exciting for us. Also, I'm kind of nervous. Either way, we hope that we will meet your expectations as the public and the fans. Because I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be easier for you to meet, uh, meet our expectations. It's, we've got the harder, harder, you know, kind of job. But we're excited, we are. I understand. Okay, so you guys have uh, eight albums out already, and uh, people say that uh, Everything Must Go is the best stuff uh, until now. But which one do you consider to be the most uh, representative as the manic sound? I think the only way you can actually um, realize what you think your best work is, is that you try to... I think you'd pick the, the records which you play most often. And for me, I, I always listen to the Holy Bible. I always listen to Everything Must Go. And I always listen to Send Away the Tigers, the new one. They're the three albums that I kind of, when I listen to them, I don't hear anything wrong with them. I feel as if they are some kind of perfection for us. So for me, I think, if I was going to pick three records to represent us, it would be Send Away the Tigers, Everything, Everything Must Go, and The Holy Bible. So these are the albums that when you listen to them, uh, you, can't, you don't analyze the instruments or something like that? Exactly, the, the music makes you switch off any analysis, it just makes you kind of feel something, which is good, you know, I mean, and I think to be honest, there's something about the Holy Bible as a record, which is, it's probably our most unique record, it's probably the only record where we touched upon something that perhaps another band has not done, I think. I understand, I understand. Uh, well, uh, about the songs, uh, some of my friends... Uh, have favorite songs like uh, You're Tender and You're Tired, Faster, My Little Empire, or the recent Second Great uh, Depression. For us, it's very hard to decide because we, we like them all. And uh, you already said that uh, you don't have a favorite, you have whole albums as favorites. But which one touched you the most when creating it? You know, which, which one of the songs? Um, it's really hard to, to choose to choose a song which you think is the best or the song that feels represents you most but you can try to make a manic rock chart you know the top ten <laughs> there are two songs there are two songs uh, there's a song called Faster of the Holy Bible which I felt that when I was given that lyric by Richie I felt as if it was I'd never written a, I'd, ne I'd never read a lyric that was like that before I felt it was very unique for a rock lyric uh, so when that actually became a song I felt there was uh, some kind of some kind of achievement there because I it was almost as if it shouldn't have been a rock song but it became a rock song. And for me, I suppose the other song which makes me feel very proud is um, "Design for Life" because that song sums up everything we were always trying to do, trying to infuse popular culture with some kind of political intent. Um, but also, it's very accessible, you know. So. Uh, I feel as if you know, the song Design for Life is such an achievement for us because it represents working class culture in Britain, which I think is a hard thing to do. Uh, you talked uh, sooner about Richie. I know that everybody asks you about this, but uh, we, we are very curious. Do you expect to see him again or was it, uh, I, guess, I guess it was hard for you to go through that situation with the sudden disappearance of him? And no, I mean, you know, this is... The strange thing about the Richie situation is, is that we have been in the band longer without Richie than, than he was in the band. So it's very strange that our experience of the band is now much longer than when he was here. Um, and, you know, this, this, we have no expectations of the situation because, you know, people sometimes think that we, we know a secret. But there is no secret, you know. Richie kind of decided to leave and he decided to leave his whole life behind whether it be his friends, us, and his family. 
which is something that you know very much kind of like left us in a, in a terrible position for a long time. But now I think we've reconciled all those emotions to something where we just remember the good times and we don't expect anything. You know, you know. So you accept his decision to take his own life in his own hands to make, uh, go on a certain road? Yes, I mean, I think that's the only way you can pray. At, at some point where you, you start to perhaps uh, kind of get a bit of closure, as Americans say, um, the only way you can actually go around it is say, yeah, you must respect his decision. You know, but this, you know, see, there is nothing we expect or know about Richie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you already said that you don't have any expectations, but uh, still, do you have a certain feeling or uh, something like that about how this show will turn up tonight? No, I have no expectations. I mean, seriously, because this year we are having very many new experiences. Uh, we played Poland for the first time. We've played Croatia for the first time. And every time you step on stage, you are stepping into the unknown. And it, it, there, is, there is a fear factor there. So if you have fear, you have no expectation. Um, but I feel as if we're, we're the kind of people that, that can turn fear into something positive, you know. Some of my musician friends always tell me that uh, even I feel the same thing, because I'm also a musician. When you're on stage, if you don't have an emotion, if you don't have the fear, that means you can't put up a good show. You, you have to have that. And I think that's the same in anything which is slightly competitive, whether you're an athlete or a, or a boxer or a footballer or a rugby player or, or a musician. I think you must have that fear, well, fear of failure. I think it's very, very important.